here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How are you guys doing today? All is well here, relatively speaking. I'm feeling better and better as each day passes, so I'm very grateful for that. And I'm coming to you today to try to make that fall wreath with that really sweet owl that I found in my basement. So that's what I'm fixing to do. And we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping that I have enough of this, hang on, of this mesh that I got. I don't know whether I'm gonna have enough to go around this thing twice. If not, I'm gonna to have to stop and run to AC Moore and get more. And running to AC Moore does not take me just five minutes. <laughs> it takes me a while to get there and back. So hopefully we'll have enough of this. But the first thing I'm gonna do is to make that funky bow because I know I have enough ribbon to do that. So I'm gonna turn this camera around and point it down so that you guys can join me and we are gonna create a pretty, hopefully, fall wreath today. So glad to see you all again. Be right back. Okie dokie, I'm back and I've been doing a little prep work here for my funky bow. And here are the three ribbons that I've chosen to use. I just love this plaid. And I have, as I mentioned before, I have all of my banister bows for my staircase made up with this plaid. So these are the three ribbons that I've chosen to use for this bow. And I've taken a little bit of time here to cut three lengths of 30 from each bolt. And now I'm dovetailing or chevroning the ends and all I'm doing is just piling all three on top of one another, folding it in half. A lot of people go to the edge and just cut or go to the fold and cut from the fold. I cut from the edge. I say that every time, don't I? You guys probably know how I do it by now, but just in case somebody is just tuning in to my channel here, I thought I'd go ahead and explain. Again, fold it in half, cut at a deep V. And that gives you a nice finished edge. All right, now I'm gonna start making, and I will uh, give you a list of all of my supplies in the description of this video. And I will explain as I go through what I use. So, all right, let's get started on this funky bow. I have a pipe cleaner waiting to tie it shut with, and I'm just going to start laying it out and going to about 10 inches. I want 10 inch tails. So I want to go to 10 inches, and then I want to go to 20 inches, and then I want to put it together, and that is going to give me a five inch loop, hopefully. <laughs> and it did. So then you pinch it together and you twist to bring the right side up. Now for me, 10, 20, and pinch. And pinch it together. And I do kind of pinch them side by side. You can see that. Somebody had asked me that one time. And you know, they kind of, when you get a big bundle in your hand, you know, they'll just pinch together however they can pinch together. And I'm not too picky. But to start out with, I kind of pinch them together side by side. 10 inches, 20 inches, put them together for that five inch loop. And Twist. Don't worry if one tail is shorter than the other. It's not going to matter in the end. I just didn't cut the, the chevrons exactly the same, and that's why some are shorter than the others. All right, then we start again with the first one we started with. And this time, I'm going to flip-flop them the other direction. 10, 20, making them the same 5-inch bows, for 5-inch loops, excuse me. 10 inch tails, and again, twisting that one tail to bring right side the right side up. And next, ten, twenty, 
10, 20. Oh, come on now. Five inch loop. And I want it to go this direction. Anyway, here we go. 10, 20. and twist and one more and I'm going to turn it and go the other direction the same direction that I started it with still 10 20 not wanting to cooperate is it <laughs> oh my gracious Two more. Okay, the last one. And there we go. And you just take your pipe cleaner, go to about the center of your pipe cleaner and just lay it over the top <clears throat> and pull it around the bottom and around the top. Pull it tight and twist. Shake that hand out that you're holding it with. And there we go. There is a funky bow. Now, of course, I take time to mess with it a little bit and spread out these tails so that they're not right on top of each other or next to one another. And sometimes this works better once you get it on the wreath or whatever it is you're working on. And I will probably do a good bit of tweaking once I get it on the wreath, but I do like to kind of mess with it a little bit. I think with this one too, I'm going to be intertwining or putting some flowers in with this one. We'll see. I don't know. I have an idea of how I want this wreath to go together, but you know, sometimes the best laid plans don't work. So we'll see how it all comes together. But there we go. That is a funky bow. And for now, I'm gonna set it aside and I'm going to move my camera around to the other side because that's the way I like to do, I like y'all to be looking at me from the left when I create the wreath. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I will be right back when I get set up on the other side of the island here. Okie dokie, I'm turned around and all set up now. And I am going to be using a 16 inch work wreath with silver chenille ties already installed on it. And yes, you can install your own chenille ties or pipe cleaners, and you know, you just need to put them on, oh, I would say at five, mm, let me measure that for you, hang on. Five to eight inch intervals, I would say. Yeah, it's about seven inches, and it's not, they're not, and some are five, and some are six, you know, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfectly the same uh, distance apart. I got this out of the 4th of July section for on sale, and I will usually do that at the end of a season when things go really in deep sales. I will grab up whatever they have left of these because I'd rather, in other times of the year, all they do is, the only ones they have in the work wreaths are the, the green chenille ties, and I don't care for those. So... I'd rather use, because I normally put something sparkly <laughs> on my wreaths, so these kind of just blend in a little easier than those green chenille ties do. Also, too, as I, as you guys will notice when I do this, I 
do my reads. These again, this is again for those who are just joining me on my channel here. Welcome, by the way, to all of my new subscribers, and thank you guys for joining me. And welcome to my YouTube family. I really appreciate your subscription and watching. <laughs> you guys are all so sweet. Thank you also to everyone for all of your comments all the time. You're so sweet. Oh, by the way, before I go further, I did uh, suggest that you know you, if you guys have any questions for me, that you go ahead and ask me whatever you want to. Uh, and some people, I had about three or four questions in my that last video. And I've saved them onto a sticky onto my computer, and I will take some time to answer all of your questions once I get more questions to answer. And I'll probably do a standalone video for that. So ask away if you have any questions. Anyway, to continue on with the wreath here now, I always do my wreaths what most consider to be upside down. Most do them this way. I choose to do them this way. I'm self-taught. Nobody ever told me which side was the right side. <laughs> so I just started doing them this way, and this works out better for me because I normally have a good many uh, things to put on my wreath, so they tend to snug down a little easier when I, this is, fella is going to go on this wreath, when I do it this way. So let's hope I have enough of this and I just start by unrolling it and letting it drop to the floor. And I pinch together, kind of accordion together the end. And I always start on the outer ring. Man, I don't know, this stuff feels kind of weird. <laughs> and tuck it right in. And give the chenille tie a good twist. Go ahead and tuck that down between the two rings and I just work my way around in a looping fashion doing it a, I make my loops about 10 to 12 inches long this loop is right about 11 inches and I kind of back it up and snug it down in there. I am going to be a little bit more conservative on my looping, I think, with this one, just because I'm not sure I'm going to have a whole, whole lot of this to go around. So I'm probably going to make them rate about 10 or 11 inches. And I'm going to go ahead and speed up and take us on around this wreath so you guys aren't bored to tears while I'm doing this. And I'll be back when I'm back over here and ready to transition over to the inner ring. Be right back. Alrighty. <clears throat> I just put that loop in to the last available chenille tie that I have. I don't know, you guys. We're going to see if we can get around that middle. I hope so. Whew. So I'm going to make one more loop, and then I'm just going to piggyback it in to right where I started. This is pretty thick stuff, you guys. This is very nice. I really like this, the way this is looking. I love it. But it is, it's not all that easy to work with. <laughs> but I'm managing all right, now, <clears throat> to transfer over, ugh, fingers crossed we can get around, you just make another loop as if you were going to go to the next available chenille tie on the outer ring, and instead, instead you just transfer right on over to the center ring. It just so happens I don't have one that's right there, so I tend to want to go to the next available one in line. But it doesn't matter. There's no rhyme or reason. You don't have to go to that one. You can go to one that's above it if you want. I just tend to like to go to the next one in line. One other thing, too, before I speed up and try to make it around here, is try to keep your whatever you're working with. Uh-oh. I didn't want to stay in there. What did I do? twisted a couple times there. Stay down there, buddy. There we go. Um, let's try to keep the right side 
or whatever side you deem to be the right side on top up for those of you who sew you know what I'm talking about right side up that way you're not going to have a lot of twisting action happening in the wreath and then it's harder to work with if you don't try to keep it straight all right so I'm going to work my way around hopefully fingers crossed I am getting low here we'll see <sighs> Plus, it's one to get stuck on the chenille ties. And anyway, I'll be back when I get all the way around. Again, working the same way. In a looping fashion, tucking it down. And moving to the next one. I'll be right back. Shoo, you guys. I am around again. But... Wow, I'm going to try to fit the end of this right on top of where I started again, and that should pull it all together, but whew, I barely made it. I think I know where I'm going to put my bow, which will be right on top of this area right here, because I don't I barely have enough room to twist that there, to push that down in there. Plus, I had to be a little bit... Uh, use a little bit less in those two. So if you go to do this, either be more conservative with your loops, as I really was from the beginning, honestly, or get yourself two skeins just in case you run out. And I didn't think to do that, duh me. But anyway, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to fluff it up here. And then the next thing to go on is gonna be the Pitberry Garland. And I think this guy is going to go on the side. But what I need to do is I need to glue a couple of pipe cleaners onto the back of him so that I have something with which to tie him on the wreath. I'm going to do that too. But I'm going to run and get me some pipe cleaners first and get those glued on. I'll be right back. All right. Come here, dude. got some bean bags in his bottom so I <laughs> look at me the garage is dark so I grabbed a black and a brown but it doesn't matter you're not gonna see them so really all I do I'm just gonna put it right in the center kind of at the top and just let that pipe cleaner sit there you guys might want to maybe do it a little differently, even if it's just put some wire like underneath of him, his fabric, and feed it through. But I know I'm not going to be using him for anything else, so this is going to work out just fine. And pull this back. Grab my pit berry garland. And cut the price tag off. I got this from AC Moore here in our town, and it was 40% off of $19.99. Does it say how long it is? It doesn't, does it? It just says simply fall. So as you can see, I'm hoping I can make it all the way around. Where I'm going to start is right where I ended. And I'm going to just simply snug this in to the outer chenille ties just like that I think that is where my bow will go right there and I'm just gonna work my way around hopefully I'll get pretty far well we'll see and we will I have some extras not another pit berry garland, but I have some extra pit berries just in case I need to span the gap a little bit here. Look at that. I made it all the way around. Woohoo! I am happy about that. I didn't think I would. Yay! It's meant to be. 
He even get, might give me some to kind of snug up in that bow too. I'm gonna kind of keep that out of the way for the moment. All right, now we grab the bow and I like to have my bow always right about up there. And this little dude is gonna sit on the side like that. So, let me get this tied on. <laughs> Pipe cleaners wanting to weave through this deco mesh. <laughs> All right, there we go. And I snuck it down pretty tight in there, so kind of it pooches up a little bit. Kind of gives it a little bit more movement, if you will. It's got a lot of movement, though. Gracious. Let me take a little couple minutes and see what I can do with this. I might speed this up, too, because this can get a little bit boring, I would imagine. Let me just mess in with this bow. Actually gonna pull some of these down a little bit. I'm gonna bring them in. I do have some more that I can cut and bring into this too. And I might cut some of these tails down a little bit. We'll see. Anyway, that's looking pretty good so far. Of course, I will tweak it and mess with it 5,000 times, 5,000 more times, I'm pretty sure because I can't stop messing with it. All right, are you dry yet, buddy? Pretty dry. All right, now, let me see where I want him to go. I would say right about there. I do take the pipe cleaners around to the, can't really see what I'm doing there. Hopefully y'all can see, but around the, looks like to be the outer ring, kind of right wherever it goes. And not to the burlap itself, but around the, the wreath form. All right, little dude. Get your rear end put down, too. In this case, I actually have a crossbar. You can see I'm tying him to kind of the crossbar there. Not extremely tight, but tight enough so that he's not going to go anywhere. And there we go. That, my friends, is the, a good start to this wreath. And actually, it might be about, I'm probably not gonna do too, too much more to it other than add some of these flowers in. And I wanna, you know, really utilize this, the, the bigness of this pit berry and really take some time to kind of get it to stand up for me. I don't want anybody to be poked in the eye by it, but at least, you know, to give it some depth, you know. And I do have some more, and I'm telling you right now, I know I'm going to be sticking some of this in and around that bow. And I have these sunflowers. So I'm going to just start... Uh, Cutting some of this stuff up and seeing. I thought I might want some more of the ribbon around on this side, but I think this fella takes care of that issue on this wreath. It's certainly loud enough on this side with him. So let me 
see what I can do with some more of these pip berries. And I'm just going to put a little glue on the end of this. down in there. And then reinforce with a little bit more glue. Ouch! Not a smart thing to do to work with the hot glue to my left here. Oh man, did I burn myself. Oh. Well, yeah, that's a lesson for you. Oh my goodness, took about a knuckle off. And part of a finger too. Well, you guys, I've really done it to myself this time. That's what I get for rushing and really hurrying. I am really <laughs> in a lot of pain with that. But I am going to finish this wreath. So I've just started to cut apart. Be shaken, sorry. Cut apart these sunflowers. And I'm just going to kind of stick them around where I think they might look pretty. Take a lesson from me. Don't rush and keep your glue gun on your dominant side. I was crossing and throwing it down and what happened was had puddled and my hand went right down in the puddle. Not pleasant. So right now I'm just messing with these sunflowers and I'm thinking I'm not going to need to do much more with this wreath. As I said, he's pretty pretty happy on this side of it. If I do anything, maybe just some of these like that. Oh, it's been a week, you guys. I think I need to go put myself in a padded room somewhere <laughs> so I don't injure myself or get sick again. <laughs> oh my gracious. one more of these. So let me spread these out a little bit over here. Put this one up here. Ouch. Okay, nab it. I don't even like that there. I like the bow. I like to be able to see the bow with the pip berries. All right, you guys. I think I'm just going to take this double glue gun <laughs> and Secure all of these, and then I'll come back with a couple final words. And then I'm going to go find me some burn cream somewhere. Hopefully I have some in the house. <laughs> oh. Hey, everyone. I'm back. How you guys doing? And here is our finished wreath. I am super happy with how this one turned out. I really, really, really do love it. 
and I'm glad I didn't put anything else on it. My gracious, with all the pip berries that are on there, I think that that is, it's just got plenty of movement, plenty of stuff going on. So, isn't it funny when I look at it in the, in the screen like that, I can see that there's a little bare spot over here. It needs a little help. There we go. <laughs> But anyway, I'll take some closer up pictures of it. Actually, I can carry it up closer to you guys, as you can see. There's the funky bow all nestled down in there with the pip berries. And I only used just three sunflowers. And then I did, you know, trim off a little bit of the you know, just a little bit of leaves that were on the same bush as the sunflowers. And that is all I did. So I'm gonna be really, really, really happy with this. Once I hang it up, I'm not sure where it will go exactly, but I'll find a place for it. So this is the only craft I think that I'm gonna trust myself <laughs> to do this week. Uh, plus, I think I'm going to be out of commission as far as crafting is concerned for a couple of days. So it's good I got this done. So uh, I'm telling you, you guys, like I said, I think I need to go find myself a, a safe room <laughs> and just sit in there for a while. Uh, but anyway, here it is. I love it. I'm, I'm happy with the end result. So with that, I'm just going to say, until next time, y'all take good care. Bye-bye.